Hello everyone, my name is Rajesh Kumar and I'm your DevOps SRE DevSecOps coach. I have a uh, close to 18 plus years of experience working uh, in uh, multiple MNSCs around the globe and uh, having in-depth knowledge of DevOps, SRE and DevSecOps. Uh, so I would like to introduce you uh, one certification program in a DevOps and that is we, we call it DevOps Certified Professional. Uh, now this is a two months of program, 25 tools uh, of DevOps you will learn. And uh, apart from that, you will also get the access to the LMS, lifetime access to the videos portal. It's a certification program and uh, you will have 25 assignments and two projects along with it. It's a completely weekend program. So here you have a classes on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, so as part of this course, you will learn multiple things. Here you see that uh, you will learn Linux, AWS, Docker, Jira, Confluence, Python, Git with GitHub, SonarCube, Maven, Gradle, Packer, Artifactory, Selenium, Jmeter, Ansible, Kubernetes, Helm, Terraform, Jenkins, Datadog, Splunk, and Neuralink. Uh, now, how do we, uh, you know, apply for this? So, how can you reach out to us? So, you have a WhatsApp number and email ID. So, please uh, reach out to us, and we'll help you to onboard this program. Uh, apart from this uh, DevOps certified professional programs, we are offering other certifications as well in a DevSecOps, SRE, and uh, one of the very very comprehensive programs which we have is in ma is in Master in DevOps Engineering. Yeah, so feel free to get in touch with us and then uh, end all for it. Thank you. This is a little bit broader. And here if you see, this is one server, Teradata server 1, Terracotta server 1, there's another server, Terracotta server B, there's application Megatron, there's another application Megatron, it can be written in any language. Through the code, you are sending that matrices of internal of code through the UDP to stash D. Here also to stash D, there is an alternative also there, carbon. And using stash D, they flush the data where? These are the backends. New Relic can be backend, Graphite can be backend, and Datadog can be a backend. So Datadog, which can be a, sub, uh, a database server, and every time you have a, this flow to store the data. So that means here, what I'm trying to tell you guys, agent will help you to gather the data from host also. One thing, agent will help you to gather the data from the integration also, like Apache and Tomcat example, and agent can help you to get the data from inside your code also. The code, the application, which you are running on that particular host using stash D. So agent has all formulas available, whichever the data you want to send it to agent, you are, have that functionality available. So now you understood that what is the stash D, all of you? Hello? Yes. Okay, so now next thing guys, next thing guys, then you'll say Rajesh, you were talking about stash D, but earlier you are teaching me dog, data dog agent. So let me remind one more time data dog agent because you know what, I forgot to start the recording. So for the recording purpose, I'm just telling you, data dog agent is a lightweight software installed in a host. It can help you to fetch the data using integration. Integration means Apache and, uh, and this one, what do you say? Um, uh, uh, system in system integrations, Apache Tomcat or CPU RAM and all kind of things. Or Docstash D, this is from your code. And API, the one which you can send it directly to API, any matrices you can send it. And also you can enable the live processes, logs and traces also. I'll show you tomorrow and next day. So agent has a primarily three component collectors, which can collect the default uh, integration data. And then we have forwarder, which forward the data to Datadoc SAS and docstash D, which is not enabled, but you can enable it if you want to send the data from your code, certain matrices, you want to send it to the docstash D and docstash D using the forwarder can send to the data. Log. So here, these are the platform supported agent. Uh, and stash D, I discussed about, about that. It's a one utility, it's open source, developed by ITC, running in your laptop, in your host, sorry, uh, host machine. And then it will do nothing but aggregation of the different matrices, which is sent to this using UDP protocol. So using UDP protocol, you can send from the different uh, 
uh, application, different types of application. You can send the matrices to stash D aggregator. Stash D aggregator will flush it in the backend, which can be uh, data dog. Here you see different types of application, which is sending a, uh, matrices, different kind of matrices from different kind of languages. Uh, at UDP port to StatsD server and then from StatsD server monitoring backend and monitoring backend can be a data doc here. So now the next question is you will ask, okay, you are talking about the StatsD, but we were discussing wow the doc StatsD. So what is the difference between the StatsD and doc StatsD? So what has happened? Agent, data doc agent have used StatsD code. Remember that data doc agent is open source. Stash D is also open source. So both are open source. So dog, a data dog agent has used the stash D code and embedded in the agent code. Yeah, that's possible because both are open source. But few modifications. Then you'll say why they have changed the name stash D to dog stash D. They are not supposed to do that. So actually they did some modification actually. What modification? So in, in a stash D, tagging functionality was not given. So they added, Datadog added the tagging functionality and because of that, they call it a dog stash D. Okay, so dog stash D is the implementation done in the Golang of ATC stash D metric aggregation daemon. It is used to receive and roll up anti battery matrices over UDP or Unix so socket, thus allowing custom code to be instrumented, custom code to be instrumented without adding latency. Okay. So this is the implementation of doc stash D. So now if you see that different programming languages you have web, Python, Ruby, Java using UDP, you send that to doc stash D, doc stash D using the forwarder, they send it to Datadog agent. So now are you comfortable with it? All of you? Yep. Cool. So guys, then you'll say what are the extra feature added by uh, Datadog in DocStashD. So these are the extra feature, histogram metric type, service check capabilities, event check and tagging functionality got added in the DocStashD. Okay, so overall, that is the story of Datadog agent. Okay, so if you want to enable the DocStashD, by default it's in, uh, disabled actually. So if you want to enable it, you have to use, there's a configuration file for Datadog which will have to make it true and the port number which has by default which UDP port which is 8125 okay so this is the collector the collector gather all standard metrics every 15 seconds and so on this is the forwarder the agent forwarder send metrics over HTTP to Datadog buffering prevents network splits from the effective metric reporting Metrics are buffered in memory until a size limit in size or number of outstanding send requests are reached. Afterwards, the oldest metrics are discarded to keep the forwarder's memory footprint manageable. This is the older version of agent 5. We are not using it. 6, we are not using it. We are using 7, which is de developed in Golang. 6 and 7 is developed in Golang. Okay. So that is one. So agent we have ui also mind it agent we do have a ui so in linux it's not enabled by default you have to manually enable it but in windows it will be enabled by default so i'll show you that during the demo uh, ui also the port number for agent ui is 5002 okay so some of the requirement for running the ui so just i'll skip it okay so what are the process when you install the agent what are the process you see in the services.msc so here you see data log agent, trace agent, process agent like that. You will see that in the windows. Which are the port we have to be careful uh, while working with the agent. So there's a few ports 5000, 5001, 5002 and 8125. 8125 we are understood it's a dog stash D port. Uh, for the UI, agent UI 5002 port. Uh, for CLI operations you have 5001 port and exposes runtime metrics about the agent at 5000 port that means if you want to know information about the agents then 5000 port you can query it okay so you can work with the cli i'll show you that one it'll be easier for you 
and these are the commands anyways i will help you with it check command config check command diagnose flare health help host name import all these commands will use it over the period of time some of the commands you can easily get it for the agent like start restart status start services and all stuff like that so good so now guys uh, coming back to the configurations so agent configuration so let me ask you one thing uh, okay let me not ask you but let me put it in this way um, it's not about the data log okay it's about the any tools so in executable you know that you must be running hundreds of executable in the system you may be running or system is running so any hard coded value if you want to embed so you typically do in the exe file also executable file only correct now all of you so if you want to change that that hard coding value how do we do that so that is where we can use configuration file so we have a configuration file for datadog agent as well and that's called datadog.yaml file it's a yaml file mind it so why to use it so i'll put it in a very simple way if you want to override the hard coded value again repeating if you want to override the hard coded value in executable of agent then you can use yaml file data dot yaml file are you understanding all of you uh, you mean to say uh, to customize anything right ha huh, if you want to customize let's say uh, hundreds of variables is hard coded in executable you can't change the hard uh, executable now but you want to change it still for your work what to do in that case so you have to use data dot yaml okay so it's a yaml file is a configuration file if you want to change any default behavior of executable you have to use this file so only behavior if you want to change those only you can modify so that way so now i'll show you the example of it don't get scared it's a pretty long file but you don't have to interact with all the variable but though is easy actually so let me show you example this is example for it all the values you can find it here look at this it's a pretty long file okay no need to scare now you don't have to remember depends on the requirement so here you see just this is one part this is another part this is the third variable this is the fourth this is the fifth now i'll explain it to you only one you will have a pattern for everything so now if you want to pass api key because agent need access to data dog right so you have api key so how do you pass it so just colon and write it that's all now i'll say rajesh i don't want to pass it here i want to pass it in the environment variable so look at this you have to environment variable you have to set this one and the variable it should be in string here so i don't know whether you are noticing or not if you set the environment variable it has to be prefixed with a dd underscore look at this if you want to set which data center you want to store so dd underscore dd underscore dd underscore dd underscore are you are you noticing or not all of you yes so that means any variable environment variable i'm talking about environment your system environment variable any variable which is start with the dd that will be only you will be you will be used for overriding it okay so there is a three option uh, basically two option there is one option which you have in the hard coded in the executable which you cannot change second option this yaml file this is called data dog dot yaml and third option environment this document has a complete detail so you can understand this so if you want to change the api so the environment variable site environment uh, here so everything you have in detail so a lot of options you have don't get scared but these are the files to look at it so now you understood that okay if you want to change the any configurations of agent you have to modify this file are we okay all of you comfortable Yes. Okay. Now you will say, Rajesh, where exactly exactly the location would be? Simple pattern, guys. In Linux, it's under etc. Datadog agent. In Windows, it will be under your programs data Datadog. And in Mac, it will be in under your user home. 
okay so everywhere the file name would be same is yaml file be careful little bit so that we understood this now guys uh, here this directory you please remember that it's a conf.d configuration directory then you'll say rajesh why we use conf directory so conf file you showed me which is here but why you are showing me conf directory so conf directory uh, i'll put it in this way in the conf directory you will see hundreds of integration configurations integration means tomcat configuration apache configuration mysql postgrel linux windows this that and configuration file so then you will say rajesh why we have conf.d and inside that why do we have so many directories and yaml file so i'll ask you one simple question i'll ask you a very simple question uh, you have uh, let's say we have 15 people and 15 of you are belong to different different projects your stakes are also different okay so you would like to keep all the configuration in one file and you get lost or you will keep the configuration in separate file so easy to manage for example i'll keep the configuration for apache in apache.yaml tomcat in tomcat.yaml uh, and is in is.yaml so that way it's easy to manage which one to modify or all these 20 30 40 tools which you are using in your production you will combine it all put it in one file which is more easier to manage which is more easier separate, to manage. Separate, separate, file. separate one. Yeah. So you have agreed. So same thing, Datadog have done it also. So they say, hey, keep the common configuration in this file, Datadog YAML, but any integration related configuration which you want to inform to the agent, then keep it in this one. Okay, so inside that con.d, there'll be tomcat.d. Inside the tomcat.d, there'll be tomcat.yaml file, like that okay so that way it's easy so remember that you'll anyways you understand this uh, as you start using it so look at this one example under the con d you have apache d http underscore h check dot d and inside that if you see that there's a yaml file so this this yaml two files which you see is only for http underscore check nothing for nothing nothing else for that so i'll explain it to you all this thing little bit later while doing it so you'll understand that troubleshoot anyways we'll experience throughout the sessions and these are the commands to start and stop the agent okay so i'll show you that one also okay so done and now time has come for demo time so any questions so far guys all of you So what we understood, so let's uh, uh, discuss about it. We discuss what is a Datadog agent. Okay, Datadog agent. Now, what are the component of agent? Okay, how it works? What are the configuration files? Related directories, some of the port specifications, UI specification of agent. And so the commands again we will run we'll get more comfortable at high level and all this stuff so guys any questions so, so far all of you if you would have any issues with our channel membership you can drop an email to us at contact at devopschool.com or you can also unsubscribe from channel membership anytime if you don't want to continue or did not like the video please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries we will reply to them at the earliest thanks for watching